Hey y'all, this is Darren Benson with Performance Motor Coaches down in Wolford, Texas. Pretty excited to bring some units to you guys today. We're going to do the first video just on this CMD, but we're going to kind of compare the chassis just a little bit on both of those videos so you kind of understand the difference between those. So we decided to do a few of these classic Peterbilts. This will be the last of the Peterbilt 389 that you will see out on the market. There might be a few more. Uh, coming from Peterbilt in the near future, but basically this is the last year of the classic Peterbilt 389. Uh, they're very, very unique and they're a little bit narrow cab, a very classic truck style. Uh, a true trucker's truck, uh, they do really well with the classic design. Of course, the white, uh, the white exterior. We added a little bit of chrome to them as well to kind of tie the cab into the conversion itself. So this particular unit right here is actually what I would consider a long hood. So this is 131 inch cab right here. Cab and hood, so the hood itself is a skosh longer compared to this guy right here is 125 inch cab, so it's a little bit smaller overall. The real difference is not in the cab. The real difference is in the hood itself. So there's not, the, the fender itself extends all the way to the back of the hood right here versus this guy next door. Don't confuse. Don't get confused with the filler panel. This does not have a filler panel right here. But you can see you have a little bit larger gap on the back side of the fender there. So that really traditional long hood. <clears throat> Unfortunately, we could not do what I consider the long hood on a 45 foot unit. Uh, you, to stay under that 45 foot range, we needed to use a little bit smaller cab itself. The only real difference between the two other than aesthetics, uh, the engine itself, uh, you get a full 605 out of this guy right here versus 565. Really and truly, you probably never ever know the difference, but if you do see them out on the road, you really see that longer hood has a little bit more classic look to it. So we'll just go ahead and jump into the unit itself. So this is a 43 CMD. Only a handful of the CMDs have actually been produced since the product, or not the product inception, but the floor plan itself. So this floor plan was kind of robbed off the Renegade XL line. Uh, the cool thing about jumping over to the Classic is you can do a chassis like this versus XL. You're going to be forced to a Cascadia or, an, or a Volvo. So really cool, classic look. Uh, we've not done anything special to it. A uh, guy could go through and add like a, like a fake stacks. Um, if you want to get wild and crazy, you probably put real stacks, but with all the emission stuff, not something we want to get into. Uh, we do extra fairings, lots of lights. A lot of these will actually have a harness from the factory to be able to add lights around the air cleaner so you kind of take it as wild as you want to go. This particular unit is not sold, this unsold unit, so it is available for purchase as of right now. It does have the polished tanks on it, so a really cool classic look to it. The 43 CMD with this particular cab puts you 43, uh, about 8 overall, so it's not a true 43 foot with that longer cab. It is a four slide unit. Uh, this could be utilized for a family or a couple uh, because of the bunk over. All the classics with a Peterbilt will have a bunk over. Uh, people like to use that for additional storage if you don't have any kind of kid. And it is adult friendly. You can pop up in there. There's a fair amount of room to jump up inside. So we did paint all the awnings, all of the slide toppers white, and then we did all the baggage handles chrome as well just to be able to tie all those in. We kind of just run down the side of the unit itself. We option our units pretty heavily. Uh, we don't do a lot of the, what I kind of frill, so to speak. Uh, so we, all the baggage compartments do have a bed liner. It does have aqua hot heating system. So that bed lining kind of makes it easier to rinse out. Um, if you had something really heavy in there, of course it can uh, wear through that if you had some big heavy metal. So we'd recommend put you know, maybe a rubber mat down. But it makes it nice. You could technically rinse them out as long as you don't get electrical components wet inside. Nice side swing baggage doors that Renegade's done for quite some time. I would say second to none in the RV industry. I don't feel like anybody has a baggage door as nice and finished as the Renegade's. So dual awning does have the pitched Gerard's up top. We didn't do the fake cams on the other side. We can always add those for somebody that wanted them after the fact, but we just wanted to do a lot of utility on this. Standard outdoor television, 43 inch. It is relatively cool in that you can, if you have some kind of you know, a little bit of shadowing or anything like that, you could take it out, pop it around, move it around, and it does have a little sound bar below there. A little bit wider entry for the 2023s. Um, 
The, the kick plate is standard. I actually noticed the one next door has a wider kick plate. We'll, we'll get that changed out. Does have keyless entry. It'll operate all the baggage compartments and the entry door itself. And there's a separate keyless system for the cab itself from Peterbilt. This is a big three quarter pass through. This is an option right here. So even though you really can't see all the way back here, I'll kind of get something that's stuck back in there. So it's a pretty good ways back. So if you had like a long table, some chairs, you could easily put that in. Additional box of tile there. And just a little extra pieces, parts. We did not option this one with a central vac. Uh, we do have the 110 plug. The, a central vac could be added. A lot of people have particular pre preferences on the central vac. Sometimes we use, sometimes we don't. All the rest of the hitch system is right in here. And then we'll come around back. So they started the Gen Y right about a year ago. Nice convertible setup where you could do you know, a two and a half inch uh, tow bar here, regular two inch tow bar here. It will come with some two and two and five sixteenths balls as well. Cool thing about this, you could flat tow and then you put a bike rack up top. So a very convertible setup. We don't put the glad hands on the back, just kind of clean them up as well. See so regular seven way plug and then a camera plug right there. This does have what they call the optional light package. So a lot of the complaint previously was not having enough visibility if your lights went out on your tow vehicle. So we took and added these additional lights up top to kind of give us more visibility further back. Look apartment right here for your cord reel and there's a 50 amp plug inside there as well. So a buddy plug. Transfer switch is located right next to that. And then anything tandem axle over 40 foot will come standard with the 12.5 Onan generator. No longer can you add a 12.5 to a single axle. And really and truly, with the way these coaches today, I don't recommend a single axle in this size of coach. They just get too darn heavy. Nice clean wet bay. Uh, this is kind of your business side that will integrate to your gray water, black water. They do a great job in that they water jet this particular panel right here. Does, does come standard with the hydronic register back inside there and the Firefly operating system allows you to monitor the temperature in that wet bay. You'll have the whole house water filter there. You do have an automatic cord reel. Power in, manual out. But a really easy setup to take and operate as far as filling or dumping all your tanks in your freshwater tank as well. We did go ahead and option it with the macerator system right there. Just makes it a little bit cleaner whenever you go to dump that. So as far as waste, you'll have two 75 gallon tanks, one 75 gallon gray, one 75 gallon black. This is a pretty elaborate system right here. And just with the evolution of the lithiums and with the price point, this, those particular coaches, we've been optioning most of these coaches with full lithium package and dual Victron inverters. The cool thing about this coach right here, you can one, run one air conditioner off of one power inverter, drive it up and down the road, if you're parked for a while. You do have enough power on board. We could take, we could typically run two air conditioners. We just have to do some other configuration after the fact. So a ton of power on board makes it very uh, usable coach for boondocking. Uh, with that kind of setup right there, you could easily go out and boondock overnight running two air conditioners and then charge back up either via the generator or the chassis. You only have about, um, you only have a 30 amp controller. I take that back, a 40 amp controller. So you just won't get enough solar in it if you're using your air conditioners quite a bit. But any kind of winter use, uh, fall use, you wouldn't have any kind of issues if you're not running the air conditioner. So we kind of stabbed everything in here. It is unique that uh, all the Cummins, or the Cummins can be optioned with the inline emission. So we did dual fuel tanks on each side. So we got two 90 gallon fuel tanks, so a ton of fuel on board. You got the def tank right here, and then you got your chassis batteries and some of your electrical components there. So still a very easy cab to get in and out of. It does take a little bit of it does take a little bit to get used to in, the, in regards to how narrow it is. Whenever the, I drove these trucks the first time, I kind of felt myself crowding the left hand line. But still a really nice setup. For some of the people that have seen the 567 videos, same type. Uh, dash 
operating system in regards to your, uh, you have a big large screen and you have a separate screen for nav. We don't integrate the cameras into those screens anymore. We just did a separate uh, monitor up top. Makes it a little bit easier to see. Uh, you don't have to look down at the dash. You can look kind of straight out and be able to see the camera screen. Nice polished air cleaners on each side. Very pronounced look. I'm six foot tall and you can see this commands a lot of respect right here. So we'll jump inside. Uh, one thing that is unique about most of the floor plans that come from Renegade is they're a very usable unit with the slides in. So I always want to make sure we do a video with it inwards and be able to see what you can utilize. So you can obviously get to your half bath here, you roll up here. I could sit here and watch TV if I needed to. Can't really kick the, uh, the theater seats out too far, but everything is very usable. I can get to the refrigerator here. <clears throat> like I said, the cab is narrow, the seats are closer together, so I can get in and out of here. I can close that off if I need to while I'm driving as well. So we'll get the video paused and get all the slides opened back up for you guys. Here we are, big spacious area with all the slides open. They actually reverse the slides from some of the typical floor plans that they do. So a little bit deeper slide over here on your camp side, your kitchen over here on your road side. I like it in that it gives you a little bit more open feel if you're here at the uh, dinette to be able to see out here versus seeing your neighbor. Uh, basically what you give up with the CMD versus say the CMR floor plan is you give up the opposing seating. Uh, you don't have any kind of televator. You have a lot more storage. So even though you only have roughly, it's about a foot and a half difference between the, the two particular floor plans, you get a lot more storage, but you do give up a little bit of that, uh, of that opposing seating. So just kind of a matter of preference, but I like the way everything lays out. Uh, I would rather this reverse, but Renegade's big on getting the refrigerator all the way up. I guess they're trying to make you uh, easily accessible to your uh, water while you're driving down the road. So uh, it is what it is, but it does have a large escape hatch right here. Pretty much that's what we order them, uh, all with escape hatches. We typically don't do a full mattress here. Uh, this will get you about 80 inches long. And then we utilize a cabinet here just to get you some more space. A little filler cushion up there and also a ladder. So obviously a lot smaller opening into the cab because the cab itself is quite a bit smaller. We can't do any additional cutout. You can't do any kind of, of a aero cap on this particular or any of the Peterbilts for that matter. So convertible booth dinette uh, that will drop down. The uh, filler cushion up there goes into place. You got storage underneath each side. We optioned a picture window right here. Still have any business kind of in the middle of the window itself. Another operating Firefly operating pad right there. So these are power and heated theater seats. There's a little bit of storage here and there on these guys. There is a plug in there with some USBs. And then this is set out just a little bit because the outdoor TV uh, is back behind that. So that sits out just a little bit there. Ton of room in the kitchen itself. All dovetail drawers, all maple hardwood construction so a ton of room right here not the only real options <clears throat> in the particular kitchen you could do a recessed cooktop I don't like sink covers so to me it's another sink cover another cover over that just more stuff to rattle I generally take them out and leave them out but everybody kind of has their own particular preference yes you could drop something on there and break it but I just think it looks a little bit cleaner and nicer I don't have to worry about any kind of edges any kind of you know food or anything like that falling down within the edges you can option a fireplace there. There again, um, I'm a. I see so many fireplaces and travel traders. I, I kind of have a, a kind of turn a blind eye to two fireplaces. But if you want a fireplace, we could easily option one in there for a person. The TV does come out. So if you need to be able, don't know why you'd really need to position it. I guess probably the biggest thing for me is you do have storage back behind. So if you need to put some additional items uh, that would normally go in a pantry, you get them back there. A little sound bar below. 
<clears throat> and then there is a subwoofer that matches or that pairs to the sound bar. All soft clothes, drawer glides. So one thing that uh, I had a conversation the other day with the customer, the reason why he liked this particular floor plan right here was the openness to the entry door. The CMR is a very closed off entryway and the older CMRs had a much narrower door so it felt like you were walking through a really thin hallway. The later model CMRs got a little bit wider but there again kind of particular preference. Um, we generally try to option a coat hanger over here and sit it right there just kind of cleans it up but we can easily add any of that stuff after the fact. There's still a ton of storage. We do a lot of Starlinks and that's a great place for the Starlink setup to go all your internal components because so we can go right up through the roof come down and then be able to pop up and put the Starlink antenna up on the roof itself. Big pantry here. Unfortunately, the lower portion of this is all covered up with uh, all your electronics. Kind of waste of space, but you do have upper and that is convertible as well. This part of the uh, Victron systems, so they do a Victron uh, inverter. We could do a tire video to talk hours about uh, the Victron system, but it's a very elaborate system that tells you kind of what you're doing with your batteries, what kind of ex life expectancy you have at your current uh, rate of consumption. A little storage underneath here. They do a good job. They actually put a small little valve assembly underneath there to be able to turn your washer dryer off so you don't have to get to the back of those to do any kind of additional plumbing to be able to turn them on and off. So if you had a leak, just reach down there. Turn them on off. They, they do separate the washer dryer, so if you do have to service one, you don't have to take them both out. It makes it a little bit easier. So half bath back here. Like I said, very accessible with or without the slides in or out. Window here in the half bath. <clears throat> it does have the matching uh, backsplash there in this half bath. I like this half bath a little bit more than the CMRs. CMR is a really small little corner uh, vanity that makes it really hard to wash your hands, but <clears throat> good room here. Uh, because of the slide mechanism, uh, this door is actually closed off. All pocket doors, there's actually uh, little magnets on the back side of that. So underneath all these particular truck chassis, you'll have your water tanks below. So you'll have, generally have two 75 gallon water tanks uh, below the bed itself. So a really open area right here. Uh, we generally do the egress window at the head of the bed, and then we do this large cabinet. Uh, because you generally have a little bit less space in a truck than you do a class A, it's nice to do this big giant closet right here to give you plenty of room. They're not super wide back behind. If you, know, if you use a little bit nicer hanger that, uh, that the head will turn, you can still put clothing uh, turned a little bit there on the back. So drawers down below and then cabinets up high. Then you do have your entertainment cabinet right there. The bed does pop up uh, to be able to easily winterize the unit and then just kind of inspect your water tank, see what's going on. If you ever need to winterize, you grab this dude right here, you have one small valve, and then you can suck the RV antifreeze in through that particular tube uh, without having to go in anywhere else. And then a pretty, pretty easy dump for your fresh water tank right there. Come back here to the Backmaster. Ton of room here, ton of storage as well. So I'm gonna pop into the shower here. Uh, plenty of room all the way around. We went ahead and option with the teak shower seat. Uh, makes it nice if you need some extra assistance or uh, if you were shaving body parts and needed some pieces, parts to, uh, or some, some place to be able to rest the foot. So uh, we do have some of the additional shower caddies ordered. We've been trying to do that for a while. We finally uh, just said, let's get them done. They're a pretty pricey option, but if you were if you were a major user of shampoos and conditioners and body, we can line these guys up and we could do more of these shower caddies elsewhere. We can do more of these uh, half little shelves as well. So nice room here. You'll see I generally don't option the skylight above. I prefer having uh, my vent right there. Just one less thing to worry about. You don't get so much heat inside the shower as well. So open up these, see a lot of room 
underneath each one of those. storage there and then a small drawer there and still a fair amount of room to plop down on here you got a fair amount of room all the way around the pocket door there it's a really nice layout um, they're doing some color changes in 2024 I'm really not as excited uh, this is one of my go-to color arrangements right here this is a Woodstock uh, stain uh, some of these will some of these colors will continue over the 2024s but Obviously, you won't see in a 2024s with the, with the old school Peterbilt 3D9. Uh, there will be a little bit of price increase on those as well. But this is kind of my go-to color arrangement right here, especially in a couple unit. Very, uh, it'll go gray tone, tan tone, very very well. Uh, you can change the colors by simply adding some uh, pillows, blankets, or uh, additional throws inside. So really happy with everything. Uh, great layout, great setup very classic look it's crazy the amount of feedback we've had off these peter belts uh, we kind of hinted that we had some coming back in the fall took them a while to get them all the way through production and get them ready to go but very happy with them and i think they're going to make you know some customers very happy they have really solid resale value as well because you won't see bit many of them so you know this is your opportunity to come out and get one of these coaches right here uh, the unit that's next door is already sold so it'd be a good opportunity to to get a really classic looking unit. We do apologize. We've been incredibly busy. Feel, feels like we've been back and forth to Indiana a gazillion times and never back in Lubbock for more than a day or two. We do have a new Instamic that we'll use up in Indiana to be able to do some more videos. Always seems like we forget this Instamic uh, and it just makes such a quality difference in the sound itself. So we'll definitely do get some more videos coming your way. We've got a handful of show haulers that are coming out of the factory. They're all sold units, but pretty excited to kind of show you guys more units, more content. Uh, it definitely benefits all the consumers, the dealership as well. So it's a, it's a, it's a great time to be able to do these videos. So really appreciate you guys coming out, watching these videos, especially if you're here at the end, we know if you've followed us all the way through. So we do appreciate that. Make sure you guys like tag and subscribe.